Well, it's a winter wonderland here in Scotlandshire. But some of us still want to ride. Turns out snow is slippery though. Who'd have thought it? On the plus side, it does make pivots easier. I think my tyres are just too narrow though. Something fatter would definitely be better for snow. While I was slipping about, the cute thief Mark II was watching from his den. I tasked him to find me the parts to build a more suitable bike for these conditions. He accepted the challenge and set off into the tundra. I wish I could see the adventures he got up to. Well, okay, maybe I don't need to see everything he gets up to. Let's leave him to it. One adventure later and he returns with a big box. Oh, you did great, pal. You did great. So, let's see what the cat dragged in. Well, we're off to a good start. The frame is an On One Fatty. It's actually the same brand as the single speed bike I built last year. These are no longer made, but were a well-reviewed mid-range bike from a few years ago. The frame has a couple of handy features, such as a tapered head tube and a low slung top tube, giving a trials frame vibe. The cool thing about the top tube is it's actually two tubes, certainly different. It's definitely a cool and quirky frame for a build. The low top tube should make it easier for any trials riding I might do too. I just hope it's strong enough. With the frame is a matching on one headset. It's a huge cup and comes with a crown race to fit a non-tapered fork. Although the cute thief has supplied a hope tapered race which seems to fit. I wonder what he's got planned. To match the lower cup, I also have an on one upper. Being a tapered frame, this is a fairly basic internal number. Time to give this wacky frame a good whacking. It's headset fitting time. Many people comment on the lack of grease when I fit headsets. The truth is, it doesn't make any real difference. So use it if you want, or don't. But because this cup is so big, I'm using grease just to make things a little easier. Easy peasy. The reason why the headset came with the 118 lower race was that the bike originally came with this steel fork. They're the same as On One's regular fork, but obviously wider for more tyre clearance. They're decent enough, but a little skinny looking compared with the Ali frame and chunky tyres. Fortunately, they're tough as hell. But look what else is in the box. Now this isn't just any normal fork. This is a Lauf Carbonara leaf spring suspension fork, and isn't that just the craziest looking thing? Lauf is an Icelandic brand, I'm probably saying the name wrong, and they make this full carbon fork for gravel, XE and fat bikes. They have a unique design relying on the flex of these glass fibre leaf springs to give 60mm of travel. Because there's no seals or friction, they're extremely supple and have no moving parts to wear out. This also means they weigh very little at just over 1000 grams. The looks are certainly Marmite though, you either love them or hate them. Now I can't say I find them particularly attractive, but I do appreciate them for what they are. To go with the oversized fat theme, the stem has a 35mm clamp. The cute thief has cheaped out, but I appreciate he got me a slightly longer 60mm one to help with any trials riding I might do. This is definitely the weirdest bike I've built yet. Anyone missing some Santa Cruz bars? The cute thief not cheaping out with these 35 more carbon ones. As is tradition, I sound the bar horn. Weird bar sounds. 
but quite fitting for such a weird bike. At this stage, it reminds me of an elephant with its trunk. Right, let's keep the weirdness going and tackle the wheels, starting with the front. Fat bikes have much wider hub spacing. Instead of a normal 100 or 110mm axle, this uses 150mm. Even this rear hub is too narrow. Fortunately, the cute thief took a trip down to Tati Bikes and got me this 150mm Hope Fat Snow Hub, which fits perfectly. The rear wheel is even wider and this 150mm hub is nowhere near fitting. And look how narrow a normal hub is. Fat bikes can be even wider than this 170mm spaced frame. 190mm is pretty common too. But while at Tighter Bikes, the guys there helped with a matching Hope Fat Snow rear hub, which again is a perfect fit. This isn't just a normal Hope Fat Snow hub though. It's been modified to give double the engagement points. These hubs work by having all four poles engage at the same time. Super reliable, but we do know from the trials hub that they can cope with only two at a time. So by very carefully grinding down two poles so they engage separately, we double the engagement points, which is very useful for trials. Let me know if you like a video showing how to do this mod. Light Bicycle have provided their drift rims. They look pretty normal from the side. But look how wide these things are. 80mm internal to be exact. Definitely the most insane rims I've ever had. And crazy lightweight. I can't wait to get these built. The Cute Thief also picked up some spokes while at tighter bikes. I've never built fat bike rims before, but it looks like it should be fairly normal. Check out my multiple guides on wheel builds if you need any help building your own. Wheel builds aren't a black magic, they're just a couple of points you need to know. Once you figure them out, the rest is fairly logical and anyone can build their own wheels if correctly guided. Despite the extra width, these light bicycle fat rims lace up just like a normal wheel. Just needs tightening now. Now it only just fit in my jig. Now I just need to stress the wheel. I would put it through the process of buying a house, but I don't have that long, so I'll just stamp on it instead. It's always confidence inspiring to see a wheel can cope with my full weight bouncing on just a few spokes with no issues. Despite the light weight and extra width, the rim strength seems good. Well, after thousands of wheel builds under my belt, I finally built my first fat bike one. I'm not building a unicycle though, so I need at least one more. I'll be quick this time though. Ah damn, <laughs> this one won't actually fit my jig. I'll use the frame and zip tie method instead. Much faster. Tire time. And who doesn't love tires? The cute thief got me these 4 inch bad boys. I've never heard of the brand, but they're lightweight and not too aggressive, which means the bike can still roll fast. Now I'm going to attempt tubeless, so I start by taping the rim with some Gorilla Tape. And it looks so strange with just a bit of the tape in the middle of such a wide rim. I won't be using an insert as hopefully such big tyres will make it much harder to rim out.
I'm not holding my breath that this will inflate even with a compressor, but I'll try it anyway. Yeah, didn't think so. I'm not giving up though, but first I'll need to put a tube in. Inflating it with a tube will push the beads into place. I can then take off one bead to remove the tube and have a much better chance of inflating it tubeless. Turns out, once it's properly fitted, it's a very tight fit. This took some effort to remove. Let's try this again. Uh, still no luck. I have one thing that might help and that's to physically pull the tire closer to the bead. I've done this before and it's worked in the past. Whether it worked now, who knows. Fingers crossed. Aha, it worked. Great success. I don't think that'll ever not be scary. Such a crazy wheel though, and so much lighter than it looks. Back when I built the 20 inch Inspired, I used some wheel milk to help the small wheels grow. Well, this is what happens when you overfeed them. I can't help give them just a little bit more though. All done. Now I just need to repeat the process for the rear wheel. And again, thanks to some Edgar Wright inspiration, the rear wheel is finished in record time. Let's see what they look like on the bike. Well, it's certainly a um, bike. Let's carry on with the fitting of the arse bracket. A hundred mil wide shell is needed to help clear the big tires. With an external arse bracket, it doesn't matter how wide it is, but I do have a specific fat bike version anyway. I think it's one of those self-installing ones. <laughs> like magic, it's fitted and even changed the lighting slightly. One of the wonders of the universe, I guess. The cute thief knows what cranks are like, so I'm pretty pleased to have some SRAM GX fat bike cranks in the box. Check out the length of that axle. Phew. Normally, I'd swap out the chainring for an inspired bash guard, but this time I'm going to leave the 32 chainring on. I might actually want to take this bike into the mountains. It's no good just having a front chain ring though. I need some rear ones too. In this case, the cute thief has pinched a well-used Shimano XT1 off someone's bike. Sorry. Ah, uh, well, I guess it's not a self-installing one. Gonna have to do this the slow way. To alternate between gears, this 11-speed SRAM mech will do nicely. I won't ask what the cute thief had to do to get this SRAM chain with all the shortages at the moment, but whatever, I'm happy he did it. I've been impressed with these chains as it's coped with a lot of trials use on my main mountain bike. Using skinny chains always gives me the fear, but I do have confidence in these. I'm pleased to find a matching shifter, although there's no bar clamp. I won't fit this just yet, as I hope fitting the brakes first might give a solution. 
So let's see what brakes we have, starting with the front. So this is awesome, the cute thief has been chatting to Hayes and managed to persuade them to give me some of their Dominion A4 models. I use these on my trials bike and they're the best brakes I've ever used. I'm going to use 180mm rotors for this bike, 2 or 3 would be overkill, quite literally might kill the frame and fork, but I want more power than 160. Plus, this fork has a minimum size of 180 due to its design. Only issue is, this is a bigger caliper than I think anyone at Lauf assumes someone would use, so it actually didn't quite fit properly. I used some spaces to make it fit, but it didn't contact all of the rotor. So instead, off camera, I sanded a tiny bit of the fork away where it was contacting the caliper, and that did the trick. I removed such a tiny amount, I have no fear that I've weakened it. Back to the future, uh, I mean shifter. As I hoped, there is a haze matchmaker allowing me to bolt it to the brake lever clamp and having a much neater bar setup. Now, let's hook this bad boy up with some cable. I always have a bit of a fear when adding gears to a bike, especially when I'm mixing brands like I'm doing here with a Shimano cassette and SRAM shifters. But this went together beautifully and works perfectly. Some of the crispest gear changes I've felt for years actually. The only concern is how close the chain is to the tyre when in the easiest gear. I guess I'll only be going slowly if I'm climbing, so I'm not too concerned. And I get much better clearance in the light speed gears. Now, back to brake to -ta time. No prizes for guessing what this is going to be. Of course, it's a matching Hayes Dominion A4. As mentioned, these are the best brakes I've ever used from modulation, power, reliability and strength. Can recommend. But as suspected, I need a plus 20 adapter to use this 180mm rotor. The cute thief thought of everything though. I love how easy these brakes are to set up. The rear hose is a little long though, so let's fix that. Hayes supply an extra barbed fitting and olive with each brake, so all you really need is an 8mm spanner and cable cutters. If done carefully, you shouldn't need to bleed the brake. Now being careful definitely paid off, no bleeding needed, which is actually the opposite of what I say when I'm out riding. One item the cute thief didn't steal are these pinned pedals. I got these at my recent factory tour, which will be linked in the description if you haven't seen that video yet. I've had a pair on my trials bike for a few weeks now and I'm getting on great with them, so it's a no brainer to get these lumps of CNC entertaining goodness on this bike too. Now back to some on one products with this quick release seat clamp. I need to educate the cat on how great dropper posts are. Maybe next time he'll get one, but until then, this on one post will have to do. Although to be fair, it is lighter than a dropper post, and I do like this clamping style, so I won't be too harsh on him. To go with the post, Warden's Trail Bikes are providing a buttock rest station. I find WDB saddles comfy, so hopefully this will follow suit. Last but not least, the finishing touch, some ODI long neck grips, my favourite. 
Don't need any fancy magic to fit these. They're as easy as it comes anyway. All done. Now, just need to make sure the bars are lined up and all the bolts are tight. Can't wait to see how this copes in the snow. And it's now spring. <laughs> to be fair, the cute thief was away on his adventure for quite some time. I could put the bike away until next year, but who am I kidding? Let's ride anyway. Now I need to weigh the bike, but it does feel very light, which certainly makes it feel quite flickable. So there we have it, the first fat bike build on my channel. Now I've had a lot of requests to build one, so I'm glad I finally got the chance. It seems to ride pretty well, I guess the next step is to get out and film. Now there is a trials comp coming up, do you reckon I should enter on this? Absolutely massive thanks to the cute thief for going out on an adventure, getting his bike. Huge thanks to Light Bicycle for the rims and to Hayes Brakes for the brakes. But what do you think? Anything you'd change? I'm going to see how I get on with this fork. It does feel a little soft, but I'm looking forward to getting out riding it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. See ya!